and in connection with the method employed therein, another point there is. This fire of mind has its source in a constellation until recently unrecognized by exoteric science as having any relation of an intimate name sense as the Pleiades are connected with the evolution of manas in the seven heavenly men is responsible for the coming in of mind in the earth chain. Each was primary to the other, or was the agent which produced the first trigger of consciousness in the particular groups involved. In every case the method was that of a slow evolutionary growth till the Consciousness suddenly blazed forth owing to the interposition of force, apparently from an extraneous source. 1. The Logos. 2. Seven Heavenly Men. 3. Heavenly Man. Human System. Planetaries. This second method therefore is that which is brought about by the hastening of the evolutionary process through influences from outside. These tend to awaken consciousness and to bring about the merging of the poles. The first method touched upon was that of the earlier solar system. The method we are now considering is the distinctive one of this solar system and will persist till the end of the Mahaman Vantara. That the earlier method was seen in the moon chain is only evidence of the steadfastness of the law of repetition by which every large cycle includes, in its earlier. 348-A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E all the lesser, and repeats the earlier procedure. This is a recognized fact, for instance, in the building of man's physical body, for the fetus reproduces all earlier stages and forms till the human is achieved, again, as we know, the fourth round reproduces briefly the earlier three but has its own distinctive quality. B. The method of initiation. In this second method, the rods of initiation are usually effect certain results. These rods are of four kinds. 1. Logoi. 2. 3. Cosmic. Used by a cosmic logo of the initiations of the solar logos and of the three major planetary. Systemic, used by a solar logos in the initiation of a planetary logos. Planetary, used by a planetary logos for initiatory purposes, and for the third, the fourth, and fifth major initiations, with the two higher. Four. Hierarchical, used by an occult hierarchy for minor initiations, and for the first two initiations of manas by the Bodhisattva.29. When man individualized in Lemurian days about 18 million years ago, it was the application of the rod of initiation to the logos of our earth chain which brought about the event and touched into activity certain centers in his body with their corresponding groups. Through this application, bringing about consciousness on. Some claim, may be regarded as literally the awakening of the lives concerned to participate in intelligent work on the mental plane. Animal man was conscious on the physical, and on the astral plane. By the stimulation effected by the electric rod this animal man awoke to consciousness on the mental. Thus the three bodies were coordinated, and the thinker enabled to function in them. 29. The above information about the rods is taken out of initiation human and solar, page 126. C-H-E-F-A-C-T-O-R-O-F-M-A-N-A-S 349. All rods of initiation cause certain effects. A. 
simulation of the latent fires till they blaze. P. 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 Entity. Synthesis of the fires through an occult activity that brings them within the radius of each other. Increase of the vibratory activity of some center, whether in man, a heavenly man, or a solar logos. Expansion of all the bodies, but primarily of the causal, this also is speaking of all the three types of. All these results were seen when the heavenly man of our scheme took initiation 18 million years ago. This initiation was brought about as earlier pointed out by a peculiar juxtaposition of James, Rose and Steam, and caused such a stimulation of all the latent manasic units within his body that is now closed here. Manas from the planetary Manasic permanent atom was possible along the path of the planetary Antasperana, a channel which exists in the case of the planetary Logos, and which has not to be built as in the case of man. Along with this juxtaposition came a similar alignment with one of the deities, permitting of Manasic influence. From that source point 3031. Third, the third method of individualization is the one to be followed in the next solar system, though it will have its faint beginnings in this one. It is not based on latent activity as in the first case, nor in electrical polarity as in the second, but in a peculiar process of called abstraction, using the word abstraction in its basic senses, the drawing out of essence. This occult abstraction is brought about by an effort of the will at present incomprehensible. The first method of individualization. 30 inches the secret of the Pleiades and of their relation to the seven rishis of the great bear, and therefore to our seven heavenly men, is not yet to be revealed. It is known only in detail to the Chohans of the seventh initiation, though the fact that there is such a relation is now exoteric. H. He, he, speaks of it in the secret doctrine. 31 CS. He, 2, 711, 725, 726. 350 ATRE -E on Cosmic Fire. Is that of the third aspect? Our latent activity, and follows the line of least resistance under the law of economy, the second method is the purely electrical one, and works under the law of attraction, while the third method lies hidden in dynamic will and is as yet to us impossible and incomprehensible. 2. Planetary Manas Wesod in the foregoing, to understand somewhat the origin of Manas whether cosmic, or otherwise through the consideration of human individualization and the method thereof. We saw that individualization is the conscious apprehension of the self of which releases all that constitutes the not-self, and that it is evoked in three ways, of which only two is yet or even dimly comprehensible. In each case this, awakening of consciousness is preceded by a period of gradual development, is instantaneous at the moment of self-realization for the first time, and is preceded by another period of gradual evolution. This period of gradual evolution leads up to another crisis which we call initiation. In one we have initiation into conscious existence, in the other initiation into spiritual existence or group identification. For a solar logos individualization dates back to stages far inferior to the triplicity 
of solar systems which constitutes for him the eternal now, the world from man's point of view embody the past, the present, and the future. A planetary loader is individualized in a previous system, a man individualizes in this, the planetary. Entities, now evolutionary, will individualize in the next. A. Consciousness and existence. From the wider point of view, the terms initiation and individualization are synonymous. They both express the idea of an expansion of consciousness, or of entrance into a new kingdom of nature. The faculty of acquiring knowledge. T-H-E-F-A-C-T-O-R-O-F-M-A-N-A-S 381 Must be realized as paralleling the development of the sense of sight or vision, as earlier pointed out. The fire of mind shone forth an illuminated animal man in Lemurian days, during that vast cycle wherein sight opened up for him the physical plane. The relationship between sight and mind is a very close one, and must not be lost. From sight, in the first round, and in the first root race of this round, hearing was the sense developed. In the second round and the second root race test will be lost. In the third round and corresponding root race sight was added to the other two, and the self which hears, and the not self which is touched, or apprehended as tangible, are related and connected by sight, the correspondence to the intelligence of sight. Thus is brought about the blending of the three fires, and illumination is present. But through all this evolutionary development the one who hears, touches, and sees, persists and interprets according to the stage of the development of the manasic principle within him. This basic interpreter who is independent of an existence whichever necessitates a form. This is the life that causes matter to vibrate and he is therefore higher vibration. This is the life of pure spirit which wills to be and which utilizes form and is therefore electrical impulse on the cosmic physical plane. Electric fire. His is the life that not only animates the atoms and electrifies them by itself. Nature, but likewise knows itself to be one who is all yet apart from all. The thinking, discriminating, self-realizing something that we call mind or solar fire. Universal mind or manas permeates all, and is equally the self-knowing, individualized entity whose body contains our solar logos as well as certain other solar logoi, whose fire, heat and radiation embrace certain other solar systems and unify them with our own system to that one. Complete vital body forms the manifestation of this mighty cosmic being. 352 ATRE ATIC on Cosmic Fire. Inc. Vortices universe on the cosmic etheric plane form the etheric framework of seven solar systems in the same way that the bodies of the seven heavenly men are the etheric centers for a solar logos, and as the seven centers in man existing in etheric matter are the animating electrical impulse of his life. To express the origin of monotone parts of manifestation through a congery of systems, a solar system, or a man as first as possible. Only as one grasps the fact that each planetary scheme, for instance, serves as the body of a heavenly man who is the directing mind in that scheme, and the animating principle of Manazova. Active discriminating faculty which every atom in that scheme only when it is realized that a solar logos is similarly the manasic principle of the large atoms we call schemes 
in their totality, only when it is apprehended that a cosmic logos is within the instigating mind of the still vaster atom of the whole system, only when it is admitted that man is the animating discriminative faculty of the tiny spheres which form his body of manifestation, and finally, only when all this is meditated upon, and its truth accepted, will this question of the origin of manas assume a less abstruse character, and the difficulty of its comprehension be less appalling. Man, the thinker, the knower, the manasic principle and the center of the many spheres which form his bodies, manipulates electrical force in three departments, astral and mental bodies through seven centers which are the focal points of force, and it is intelligent dispersal throughout his little system to the myriads of lesser atoms, which are the cells in these spheres. A heavenly manacoli, and in a wider sense, the thinker and knower, the manasic or mind principle plus the buddhic or Christ principle, manipulates electrical force through three principal vehicles of globes and atmic, buddhic, and manasic matter, dispersing it from thence. T-H-E-F-A-C-T-O-R-O-F-M-A-N-A-S-353 To the myriads of cells which correspond to the human and human units. wider sense is the permeating universal mind, the manasic principle, plus the vedic and the will principle, working in three major schemes, by means of seven centers of force, and through the myriads of groups which are the cells in the body, in the same way as human beings are the cells in the body of a heavenly man. The cosmic logos of our system works similarly through three major systems, of which ours is not one, utilizing seven solar systems, of which ours is one, for the distribution of his force and having myriads of seven groups of the cells of his body. B. Will and order purpose. Thus all that we can really predicate and end the origin of manas is that it is the unified collectivity, for the purposeful expression of the realized identity of some great self which colors the light, brings into intelligent cooperation all the lesser units included in its sphere of influence. Each of us, in illustration, is the thinking purposeful entity who acts as the managing principle, and the spring of action, to all the units included in our three bodies. Each of us sways them to our will, and by acting, force cooperation as we see fit. The logos is the same on a larger scale. In this thought lies light on the question of karma, of free will and of responsibility. Manas is, really will working itself out on the physical plane, and the truth of this will be seen when it is realized that all our planes form the cosmic physical plane, whereon an entity, inconceivable greater than our logos, is working out a set purpose through the logos, through us, through all spirit substance that is included within the sphere of radiatory activity. Certain problems of real interest are prone to enter our minds, but they serve only to develop abstract thought. 354 ATREATISE on Cosmic Fire. Answer, stand with consciousness, for they are as yet insoluble and will remain so. Some of them might be enumerated as follows. 1. 2. 3, 4, 5. Voice the cosmic entity in these team our logos plays his little part. What is the nature of the great purpose he is working out? Which center in his body is represented by our solar system? 
What is the nature of the incarnation he is now undergoing? One of the ten systems, the three and the seven of which our solar system is one. Must we look for the major three within the seven, or extraneous? Six. Seven. What is the coloring or basic quality of this cosmic entity? Is the coloring of the fourth cosmic ether, the Buddhic plane blue, or is it violet to correspond with our fourth physical ether? Why is Buddy exoterically regarded as yellow in color? 8, 9, 10. Which are the primary three centers in the body of our solar logos in which the minor four? What is the karma of the different schemes? What is the overbalancing karma of the logos himself as it affects the ten schemes within the system? All these questions, and numbers of others, will arise in the mind of the interested student, but beyond the formulation of them he may not as yet go, though the fifth round will see the realization, by men, of the nature of the karma of the logos of our chain. Words, as oft we have been told, blind and stultified. In summing up, this quality of manas may be somewhat apprehended if the student regards it as the intelligent. T-H-E-F-A-C-T-O-R-O-F-M-A-N-A-S 355 Will The active purpose and the fixed idea of some entity which brings about existence utilizes form and works out effects from causes through discrimination in matter, separation into form, and the driving of all units within his sphere of influence to the fulfillment of that set purpose. Man is the originating source of mind as regards the matter of his vehicles and their latent manasic impulse. So again with a heavenly man and his larger sphere of influence, and so with the solar logos. Each discriminated, and thus formed his ring past on. Each has a purpose in view for every incarnation. Each is actively following and intelligently working to effect certain ends. Thus each is the originator of manas to his scheme, each is the animating fire of intelligence to his system, each, through this very manasic principle individualizes, expands gradually the self-realization till it includes the ring pack not of the entity through whom the fifth principle comes to him, and each attains initiation and eventually escapes from form. Human Manas Where now to consider primarily man and the Manasic Principle, its development in the fourth creative hierarchy, the human monads, with special reference to our earth chain. We have seen that, to all intents and purposes, Manas is the active will of an entity working itself out through all the lesser lives who go to the content of the ring pass not our sphere of influence of the indwelling existence. And therefore as concerning man on this chain he is but expressing the purpose and the will and action of the planetary logos in whose body he is a cell or lesser life. Certain mysteries arise consequently for our consideration which are connected with the life cycles of the heavenly man of our scheme, and particularly in relation to that special incarnation of his which we call the cycle. 356-A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E Of manifestation on the dense physical growth, the Earth wears the planetary body as man wears the robe of the physical body, and by means of this objective form he works with purposes out on the physical plane, through the factor of mind achieving certain goals. 
Incidentally, the cells in his body conform to that mind which plays upon them, just as man, the intelligent principle of incarnation on the physical plane, brings into conformity with his purpose the atoms of his body, and stimulates ever more and more the sterility of those atoms by the force of his minds playing upon them. Here comes the opportunity to make clear something that is off lost sight of in the general fog surrounding this subject. The human and diva units on the upward arc, two of the cells in his body, go to the formation of the centers, and not to the remainder of the cellular vital substance of his vehicles. Man has a body made up of matter which is applied to different uses, yet which forms a unit. In this unit there are certain areas of more vital importance than other areas from the standpoint of energizing force. Such an area as the heart may, in this connection, be considered and compared as regards force value with such an area as the calf of the leg. The entity, man, utilizes both, but the heart center is of paramount importance. Thus is it also with a heavenly man. The two great hierarchies given in human are force centers in the body of a planetary logos, the other evolutions of an involutionary nature extant within the scheme, and the remainder of the active substance of the globes, and all contained therein, go to the content of the remainder of the body. A. Man and the planetary logos. With the diva evolution at this point we have not to do. I seek to concentrate attention on man as he functions on earth. In order to clarify the idea of manas and its relation to a human being it is necessary to point out certain things. T-H-E-F-A-C-T-O-R-O-F-M-A-N-A-S 357 In connection with a heavenly man which must be born in mind. First, that each heavenly man holds the position of a center in the body of the solar logos. Therefore, the logos of the scheme will embody some outstanding characteristics. The ten schemes are the seven, and the synthesizing three not the seven in a lower three. The lower centers were vital in the last solar system, from the esoteric standpoint, and are not counted in this, they were synthesized and absorbed during the obscuration process of System I. Secondly, each heavenly man is consequently the embodiment of a particular kind of electrical force which flows through his scheme as man's force flows through some one of the etheric centers in his body. Each scheme, as each human center, A, B, C, D, E, vibrates with some one key, have its own coloring resemble, when seen from the higher planes, a vast lotus. Possess, according to its vibratory capacity, a definite number of petals. Be connected in geometrical formation with certain other centers of heavenly men, making systemic triangles point three two. F. Be characterized by different stages of activity according to the initiation towards which the logos may be working. Thus, at one period one center or heavenly man may be the subject of logoic attention, and of specialized stimulation, and at another period a totally different scheme may be the object of vitalization. Four. Sometime the Logos has turned his attention to the Earth's scheme and to Saturn, whilst Uranus is receiving. 32 A hint of this triangle of force was conveyed in letters on occult meditation, 
page 79-84, when speaking of man and his centers. 358 ATREATISE on cosmic fire. Simulation. Much is therefore accentuated, and increased evolutionary development is the consequence of this divine attention. When these facts are born in mind it will be seen that the interaction, and the complexity, is of vast proportions, and man can do no more than accept the fact, and leave the explanation until his consciousness is of greater scope. Third, one of the mysteries revealed at initiation is that of the little center which our scheme represents, and the type of electrical fire which is flowing through it. The seven brothers, or the seven types of poetic force, express themselves through the seven centers, and the one who is animating our scheme stands revealed at the third initiation. It is by knowledge of the nature and quality of the electrical force of our center. And by realization of the place our center holds in the body logoic, that the hierarchy achieves the aims of evolution. It will be obvious that the heavenly man who stands for the Kundalini Center, for instance, will work differently, and have a different purpose and method, from his brother who stands for the heart center in the body logoic, or to the heavenly man who embodies the logoic solar plexus. From this it is apparent that, A, B, C, P, E, the type of electrical force, the vibratory action, the purpose, the evolutionary development, the dual and triangular interaction. Of all the heavenly men will differ, and so will the evolutions that form the cells in their bodies differ likewise. Little has as yet been revealed yet the types of evolutions which are to be found in the other schemes of our system. Suffice it to say that in all the schemes, on some THEFACTOROFMANAS 359 Globe in the scheme, human beings or self-conscious units are to be found. Conditions of life, environment and form may differ, but the human hierarchy works in all schemes. It must also be borne in mind that just as all seven heavenly men are found in the body logoic, and are themselves under the influence of seven solar logoi using the word influence in its astrological sense, so in a planetary scheme with its seven pillars, each of us go logically under the influence of all the seven heavenly men. Ash and the other system. Each of the heavenly men pours forth his radiation or influence, and stimulates in some way some other center or globe. To word it otherwise, his magnetism is felt by his brothers in a greater or less degree according to the work being undertaken at any one time. At present the heavenly men, representing centers at different stages of stimulation, being not all equally developed and being not as yet psychically unified, this magnetic interplay is little utilized, and the psychic flow from one scheme to another is little utilized or comprehended. As time elapses this interplay of course will become more evident and the force will be consciously employed. When men, for instance, know the quality of the force flowing through their particular scheme, the purpose and name of the center they stand within, the center or heavenly man with whom the logos of their scheme is allied, which two schemes form, with their own, a triangle for logoic force at a certain stage of evolutionary development. The secret of the cycles, or the periods of stimulation are 
inspiration. Then will the body logo begin to achieve its purpose. 368 TREATISE on Cosmic Fire. Then will the logos of our system begin to blend and merge and coordinate all his vehicles. Then will the force flow through all the centers unimpeded. And then will the glory shine out, and each cell in every body logoic, planetary, even and human, blaze forth with perfected glory, vibrate with adjusted accuracy, and a major cosmic. Initiation be taken. The logos of our scheme. The heavenly man or planetary logos of the Earth's scheme can be considered in various ways, and as is our custom we will simply tabulate the statements and mention them. When considered at length by the individual student, should serve to make the fact of the essential personality of this great entity, the work that he is endeavoring to accomplish, and the relationship of the human hierarchy to him, a greater reality. We must bear in mind in studying this matter that it will not be possible to reveal for general publication details as to his specific identity, his number and his scope of conscious development. Such mysteries, as earlier pointed out, are reserved for those who are pledged to keep silent. But some general idea may be conveyed before we take up specifically this chain and round. it serves in this hour of the world. Apart from the fact that the truth of giving out of the truth works under the law, and may not be gainsaid, it is suggested for consideration that much advantage will be felt when men in large numbers conceive of the purpose of specific manifestations, when they realize that all forms are but the modes of expression of certain entities or beings, who occupy them for cycles of definite duration in order to attain a purpose, and that each life great or small serves its own ends, yet some serves the greater ends of the being in whose body it is a corporate part. The details of the plan may not be given. THEFAPTOROFMANAS 361 General Outline Solar, Planetary, and Hierarchical may be suggested, and by the very suggestion, bring order into the thoughts of men as they view the apparent chaos of the moment. Let us not forget, that when order is brought about, and united thought produced on the mental plane, then order transpires eventually on the physical plane. The planetary logos of this scene is one of the four minor logoi, are lords of the race, and especially concerned therefore with the development of one attribute of manas. Each of the four minor rays is, as we know, eventually synthesized, or absorbed into that ray which is represented on our Earth by the Mahachohan. He is awarded the third major ray or aspect, and synthesizes the four. These four rays of the synthesizing ray make the five rays of mana or mind. We can consider them as A, B, the fivefold drama aspect. They were the five rays of time importance in the first solar system, and were the five individualized heavenly men, called the mind-born sons of Brahma. Through the individualization of the four in that system, the individualization of the great cosmic entity we call Brahma was brought about. He individualized and the four go to the content of his body. See. They are represented on our earth by the five Kumaras who obeyed the law, and who 